Let's put our hands together as we thank the Lord and bless the Lord at this time. Thank him for equal grace. Thank him for unmerited grace. And thank him for still loving us beyond what we can ever love ourselves. This is the day which the Lord has made and we are definitely going to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, uh, sons and daughters of God, wherever you are, interacting with the things of God. We want to bless the name of God with you and for you. Let's um, pray and then we get into it. Father God, thank you so much for this morning. We are so grateful that, Lord, you have a purpose and you have a word. Speak to us. Speak to our world. Speak to this world through this word, God. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen and amen again. It was this week when all of us, most of us, were able to see the transition, peaceful transition of power. And as we watched, as we all were glued to our televisions, watching to see some historic moments as the very first uh, female vice president or anything to do with president in the United States, as she took her place, history was made as we experienced the first uh, second gentleman in the history of America. There were so many historic things as the president, the oldest president, to, it was also historic. And we were watching. I noticed something that was missing. Out of all these things, in fact, then I was reminded that it had already happened before the happening had happened. In other words, as we were looking at this inauguration, we noticed that the former president who was still current on the 20th was not there. And then we started wondering what was going on and we discovered that he had already done, he wasn't going to attend. Brock tradition, which was more than 150 years. Everybody ought to be there, ought to uh, transition out of power peacefully in America. But one thing I discovered was that I said, well, he was not there there and so I wanted to go I went to YouTube to hear what he had said before he left and then something just landed sister Cheryl on my heart that I want to share with the child of God today I'm going to speak on the subject deal with this first deal with this first and I'm telling you this came from this great historic event that happened in America as I looked at to the man who used to bring in thousands of people into arenas as he danced to the YMCA song, as he did everything, I noticed that his face was different. I noticed that his uh, candor was different. I noticed that there was something, there was a cloud on him. And I want to share this with somebody today, and I believe God is going to deliver us out of this. I noticed bitterness. Bitterness. We, are, we now have a country that is divided over bitterness. People are just bitter. And I want to address this and talk to somebody and say, deal with this first. If you are going to go anywhere, go any further in the things of God, and even in your life this year, 2021, you need to deal with bitterness first. Because you might, bitterness will make you forget that you are still the president. Bitterness will make you forget that till 12 noon, you are still the man. If anything happens, you still have the command. You are still the command in chief. Bitterness has a way of minimizing what God has done through your life and over emphasizing what you think you deserve that you are not getting. And I'm talking already to somebody. I just want to teach this morning because we got to deal with this first. There are families that are not together because of bitterness. There are people who are not enjoying their jobs because of bitterness. There are children who are not respecting parents because of bitterness. There are neighbors who do not like their other neighbors because of bitterness. There are people who are angry on the freeways and highways and byways in the cities because of bitterness. I'm telling you, bitterness... I discovered, I said, Lord, I need to talk more about this this week. And here's what I discovered. I discovered that since the number one of uh, Ben out, the one, the number one thing that causes Ben out to people is not stress. This is going to blow you up. You need to Google this thing up and discover it's not stress that is the number one Ben out uh, reason. 
the number one bent out reason, Sister Cheryl, is bitterness. Bitterness can burn you out physically, can burn you out spiritually, can burn you out socially. I have never seen a happy, bitter person. I've never, no matter how much you try, you may put on all the clothes and try to look up. There is no happy, bitter person. And what does the word of God say in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14 through 17? We, want, we need a word. We really need a word. Thank you, Mother Smith, for that word that you gave us. It says in verse 14 in Hebrews chapter 12, pursue peace with all people. Not most people. Everybody. Okay. Pursue, it means you are chasing after it. It means you must put effort in being peaceful with everybody. It's on you 100% responsible for you to be at peace with everybody. Listen to this. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Then verse 15 says, looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. You can fall short of the grace of God. Because the text is saying looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Listen to this. Lest, underline, any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this many become defiled. Lest any root of bitterness bringing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Do you, see, do you see it in the text? It says bitterness starts as a root. And the last time I checked, every root is underground. See, the danger of bitterness is that it is not visible. It gets stronger whilst nobody's watching. Bitterness is a root. Anger is the fruit of oh God. Here it is. In other words, if you don't deal with the root, you're going to bear the fruit. And so it is possible for you to have a life where it's all the fruit of bitterness and people wonder why you are mad. People wonder why you are never happy. People wonder why you are critical. People wonder why nothing good is ever is a root. And because it is invisible, it can get stronger. And because it is underground, you can fertilize it. And I just want to teach something here. Five things I want to share. You got to deal with this first. I'm telling you right now, it, they nobody perfect in this world. They no perfect spouse. There's no perfect pastor. There's no perfect church. There's no perfect deacon. There's no perfect you deal with the hurts that you experience in life because the number one right that bitterness tells you bitterness tells you you have a right to hurt because of the hurt that was done to you that's the number one right that bitterness gives you and here it is my friends few things I want to share with us number one in order for us to deal with bitterness first you must understand the hate of your bitterness. You need to understand that because bitterness hurts you more than it hurts the person you are against. Amen. See, whilst my, the former president could not attend the, the inauguration, it didn't stop the inauguration. It, it didn't stop the motorcades. It didn't mess up the whole day. The only person whose day was messed up was the most powerful man who was still president till noon because he, he did not hate of his bitterness. And I wanted to understand, my friend, that whatever it is that's making you bitter, there are more bitter people in the church than in the club. I've noticed that. There are more people who are bitter in the church. That's why we have more, more, more crazy stuff in the church than in the world. Because in the street, people have a street code of how to deal with it. But in the church, we put scripture on it. But bitter is bitter. So you got to understand. The, 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 the hate of your bitterness. If you don't, you're going, you need to understand, why do I have headaches? 
When I see somebody, when I go somewhere, when somebody's blessed, how come I get a headache? That's seeking to understand. What are my triggers? Oh, I'm divorced, pastor, and somebody gets married and they're holding hands, and I, if I don't understand my bitterness, I can be angry over someone who has what I don't have as if they're taking from what I need. See, bitterness makes you punish everybody for having what you don't have and blaming them for you not having it, which is a crazy because there ain't nobody in this world who's thinking, listen, if somebody's happy, it doesn't mean they took it from, they took yours. We can all be happy at the same time. So you need to understand your, the hate of your bitterness. And here's number two. The Bible says, please watch out for bitterness because it is a root. And what this, it says in 15, it will spring up. Bitterness will grow. That's what it means, sis. It will spring up. And watch this. As bitterness springs up, it will cause trouble. Bitter people cause trouble. We almost had our capital, uh, capital Hill. It almost was literally burned. I mean, people stormed in and tried to do crazy stuff that had never been done in America. That was trouble out of bitterness. Now, that's on a national level, but I want you to think about you. What is it in your life that's not flourishing because you haven't dealt with bitterness first? Who are you punishing because you are bitter that they appear to be happy without you? <laughs> because you need to understand, bitterness makes you feel that you punish people for being happy without you, for being blessed without you, for singing without you, for being in church without you. You punish people and yet nobody's stopping you from doing what they're doing. The president could have been at the inauguration. He could have been introduced as the president. People would have still wanted pictures with him. But because bitterness came and he simply said, well, if you're going to be happy, I'm taking the ball. I'm going home and there ain't nothing that's going to happen. And I've got good news for you, breaking news. Everything happened. It's amazing that Bitterness even in the church, the people who run the church are people who don't attend church. And some of them, they're running church whilst they're not in church because they, they are punishing those who are having fun in church without them. Oh, you got to deal with this first. See, I was talking to my daughter, Gil, last night, and she said to me, you know, Daddy, I've noticed something. I said, what, it is, what is it? She said, well, misunderstandings are very petty. You know, small little things can destroy good friends. And then I dropped in. I said, daughter, bitterness is the worst. Because there ain't somebody listening to me right now. That person you no longer talk to, never visit, never love. There ain't nothing wrong that they've done. You are just bitter over their success without you. And here's number two. Deal with it. Do this first. How do I deal with my bitterness? Here it is, Gil. Confront with honesty. In fact, let me put it this way. Confront the honesty of your bitterness. Do you know what that means? It means you're be you are bitter. Honestly, you are bitter. And you must confront the honesty of your bitterness. Oh, oh God, it is. You are not like. You don't become bitter because you are lying to you. That reality you have is the honesty that's feeding the bitterness. It doesn't make the bitterness better because there's an honest reason to you. But you need to confront whatever is, is backing up and making sense out of your bitterness. You must confront it because if you don't confront that, you are going to remain bitter and fake that you are not. See, see, see. Oh, God, here it is. Some of the medication we have 
in our medication cabinet. We don't, you don't need a leave when you wake up in the morning every day. You need to confront the honesty of your bitterness. Because what a leave will do, it will mess up your brain so that you don't feel the pain, but it never takes away the pain. The pain is still there, but it's just don't feel it. But what happens when you confront the honesty of your bitterness is it takes away the pain. There's a lot of things in this world that can help you manage your pain. See, you can be the greatest pain manager in your life. Yeah, you can get Tylenol, that's managing pain. You, you can get Aleve, that's managing pain. You, you, you can get Excedrin, that's managing pain. But it, you can get weed, that's managing pain. And you can get drugs, that's managing pain. And, but at some point, you got to go to the doctor and say, Doctor, check me up. What's up with me? So if you are to deal with bitterness... You need to confront the honesty of your bitterness. I, I'm making a point on this one. I didn't say confront with honest. No, I said confront the. Here it is. Here it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There is a way that seems right. Aha. Uh -huh. The Bible didn't say it's a wrong way. The Bible says, well, it seems. It, it's not right, but it seems right. There are people in jail today because it seemed right to go and do a revenge shooting. It wasn't right, but it seemed right. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is what everybody is. So you must learn to confront the honesty of your bitterness. Because you are not a fool. Let me say that. That's good news right there. See, you ain't mad for no reason. Uh -huh. It's good to you. Oh. <laughs> so you need to confront it. Oh, please forgive me, Holy Ghost. Number three, here it is. You got to deal with this. I'm telling you, if you want to fly light, you need to have a, a light heart. Bitterness puts heaviness on you. I mean, I was trying to fly somewhere at Gil. told me I was already on and the door was closed we're ready to go and we had to wait for an hour sis you're looking at me and you're asking pastor why did you have to wait instead of taking off they said well we need to de-ice the plane oh, they said because you need to understand was the plane was there the ice was heavy on the wings of to de-ice the plane you are ready to go we are ready to go but the plane won't take off as long as there is uh, some ice on top of the plane there are some people in this life who are ready to take off. You got the degrees, you got the house, you got the car, you got the job. You got eyes of bitterness. It's weighing you now. There are churches that are ready to fly and be in 15 multiple sites and do great things. But because of bitterness on the inside of the church, they are killing the greatness of the church. This is what bitterness does. You need de-icing off it in order for you to take off. No, oh, I feel like preacher here is number three. So, 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 so understand <laughs> that listen, it's hurting you more. It's hurting you more. You cannot enjoy your cake when you are bitter. You just can't. I mean, you complain about the salt in the cake. <laughs> Have you ever met people who complain about everything? I mean, just complain because that, that you need to. Okay. Number two, confront the honesty of your bitterness. Number three. Number three is very important, verse 15. Listen to verse 15. Look carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness um, springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Here's number three. Number three, it's amazing, Gil. Looking at this thing, everybody, listen to this. It says, uh, look, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. You got that? The grace of God, lest any root of bitterness, the grace of God and bitterness, they are all put in the same concept. When I lose the grace of God, there are some things that can grow in my life. And as they spring, in other words, your bitterness is actually a revelation of your relationship with God. So you can't have a great relationship with God and be bitter at the same time. No. 
No, 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 no. You, you have to fall short of the grace of God in order for the root of bitterness to start germinating and then you start watering it by having friends who are bitter, birds of a feather flock together, by putting, watching negative things and reading negative things and before you know it, when the president left, the former president, it was amazing that he had lawyers who were defending him. See, bitterness has friends. Oh, oh, okay, okay, I'll leave you alone. Simply because you have friends, it don't mean you are right. Simply because you got lawyers, it don't mean, oh God, can I say that? Simply because you have got sympathizers, sis, it don't mean you won election. That's on the national, but come down into your life. Simply because Betty and Jimmy and John call you and say you're right. It don't mean you're right. Right, right, right. Okay, okay, here it is. Here it is. Go to the heart of your bitterness. Go to it. Let me tell you something. People who can deal with it as courageous people. It takes courage for you to face your bitterness and say, I am done with this. I want out of this, but you will not get out of this without understanding what this is. What's at the heart? People say to me, Daddy, it's so amazing that the former president who just left this week is a 74-year-old man, and the one who just came in, Severi, they're two old men. And one old man is acting like he's in middle school. So you got to go to the heart. Don't forget words that were said during the campaign. Somebody said, well, if I, if I lose, I cannot lose to this stutterer. I cannot lose to this crazy. See, you need to understand what you say before the final score can become the reason why you cannot humble yourself when it's true that you're not the man. See, see I put something on Facebook. I said, look, when you are in your frustrated season, let you shut up. Just learn to shut up. Whenever you are in a frustrated season, hush. Well, the Bible puts it this way, be still. And know that I am God. In other words, when you are in a frustrated season, learn silence will cover you. Because nobody, listen to this, nobody can miscourt silence. But you see, we say a lot of stuff that people, the devil, here it is. Whenever you say negative stuff, you are giving the devil material to work with against you. So when you are in a place, in a better place, the devil says, was this you? Let me play the audio. Let me show you the video. And you are saying, wait a minute, I was mad, but I'm not mad anymore. And the devil says, let's forget that. You must be mad. Look at your face. Look at how you're looking. Ain't no way. You could be all right in a week. Get to the heart of your bitterness. Can I say it? Because seriously, you cannot be mad. I put something on Facebook this week. I said, I said, I said, don't be mad. Don't have relationship problems with people you don't have relationships with. And don't have friendship problems with people who ain't your friend. You didn't hear what I'm saying. Don't just spread your, your, your emotional economy to everybody. I, I mean, we meet in Walmart, you mad at me like your friend. No. Bitterness makes you have relationship problems with people you don't have relationships with. Friendship problems with the people who ain't your friend. Guess what? When they leave you, you mad, they've already forgotten about it because you ain't my friend. Oh, okay, let me finish up. Number four, here it is. <laughs> so you got to go to the heart of your bitterness. What's making me bitter? You sit around, all oh, men are dogs. No, that's a lie. You might have dealt with one dog. That don't mean all men are dogs. Go to the heart 
of your business. I don't trust nobody. Oh, you're going to learn to trust someone because the shirt you got, you didn't make it. The hair you got, you didn't make it. The mask you have, you didn't make it. Your car, you didn't make it. The gas in the car, you didn't make it. You're going to trust somebody here today. The traffic light that stopped you, you didn't stop it. You need to understand. You, you cannot live a life without trusting anybody. Oh, I don't trust nobody. No, go to the heart of your bitterness. What makes you not trust people? Pastor, I was molested as a child. Okay, now. You need to put a finger on it. Pastor, I'm 50 years old, but I'm still a three-year-old kid who was molested. And nobody helped me to grow emotionally from 3 to 55. You are mad at my behavior. You don't understand the root of my behavior. If you don't see the heart of my bitterness, you punish me for the fruit. Take all the fruit and when season comes, I'll produce more fruit. You're going to deal with this thing first. You got to deal with these things first. I'm telling you, I looked at television. I was hurt as a leader to see one leader walk away with his tail between his legs when he had done the best that he could. Well, listen, there ain't no perfect leader. If anything, we could thank God for the vaccine because it came during his administration. You cannot hate the man to not give him credit for some stuff. But he got on the plane with nothing when the whole nation could have simply said, thank you. Glad you're out, but thank you. Number four, here it is. Admit the hurt of your bitterness. Admit the hurt of your bitterness. I I'm telling you, you've got to go to the heart of it and then admit it. Admit that I'm hurting. The Bible says be careful, Gil, because the root of bitterness will spring up and cause trouble. Trouble in your adult life, trouble in your relationship, trouble in your career, trouble in your walk with God. In other words, here it is, if you don't admit to it, listen to me, you cannot look at God, you cannot love God when you are hurting because of bitterness. It don't work. It, it, it doesn't work. It, it's like dying in, how do I, how do I put that? It, it, suffocate for lack of oxygen when you're on an oxygen mask. Okay, that's crazy, ain't it? Yeah, we try, I can see you trying to think. Uh, how, how can you, some, how can you, it, when you got the oxygen, and it's, here it is. Admit the hurt of your bitterness. As a counselor and pastor, one thing I've discovered it's been said, somebody once said, once a person gets divorced the first time, it is easy for them to be divorced for the second and third time. Uh, that's, what, that's, what, that's the statistics out there. But here's where the reality of it is. It is so because people never admitted the hurt. So what happens is you enter the new relationship with the baggage of the old relationship. So if you don't address it, if you don't admit it, because John is not James and Julie is not Lily, you got to get your point of understanding. It's not about changing faces and people because the only constant is you. You were in the last relationship, you are in the new relationship, and this one was not with you in the last, and the one in the last is not with you in this one. How come you are reaping the same result? So what happens is people are not willing to admit it happens with church members. People leave one church and go to another church and create the same devil in the new church and leave the church. But the issue is the church was there before you got there. How come they were thriving before you got there and you are there two days and you are telling them they ain't going to go nowhere? No, it's you. Deal with it. Deal with it. I, listen, I, they are, not every pastor can preach. There are some churches where pastors don't know how to put it together. 
and I just been in prayer if they're going to put it together, but the churches are full of happy people. Now, you didn't hear what I'm saying. I mean, people love to go to church. I mean, they can't wait to go to church. When the place is happy and bitterness is not governing, people go there. But for you, my friend, as I watched this president go away for this whole week, we never saw him on TV again. Because of lack of admission of the hurt of bitterness. Bitterness, somebody said, it's like drinking poison and hoping somebody else. Yeah, it's like drinking poison and hoping that your enemy dies, but you drinking it. So you got to go, I admit it, I'm hurting Gil. Why? Let's go to the heart of it. I think I deserve A, B, C, D, E. I don't get A, B, C, D, E. That's the heart of my hurt, and I must admit it. It doesn't mean admitting it that way, I am right. But in order for you to help me so that the root of bitterness does not spring up, you must know why I am failing. And then the song you guys sang becomes true. Whilst you're in that place, when you admit your bitterness, it's as if you're singing the song, I feel like going on. That, that, when you admit your bitterness, that's what you're singing spiritually. I feel like going on. In other words, I got to admit it because I want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Here's number five, then we're done. Number five, how do I deal with bitterness? Well, the healing of your bitterness. Admitting it, discovering it, confronting it, understanding it is not enough. You need to seek the healing of your bitterness. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's a root. There has to be a process of healing it. Because you don't forget, you heard your bitterness because you had a reason. Oh, he left me with the children and I was alone. He never sent no money. He never came to see the kids. You, you are right. You are bitter because of that which appears to be right. But here's where the issue... Can I say this? This, this, is, this is crazy guilt. I, I don't have time, but it is. Every reason you use to do what you do is right to you. Let me say it again. <laughs> see, see, that's why Jesus said, judge not. Because the reason is not good for you, but it's good for you. But simply because it's good for them, it doesn't mean it's good to them. It's different. You know? so, so at the end, it's good to them, but it's not good for them. So here's the last thing that is very important. Seek the healing of your bitterness. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31, then we are out of here. I, I need to let the Bible speak on this one because I don't want to start trouble. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31, it says, well, listen to this very powerful verse. It says in verse 31 of Ephesians chapter 4, it says, um, <laughs> let all bitterness, not most bitterness, not little bitterness, all bitterness, justifiable, uh, unjustifiable, personal, corporate, let all bitterness, listen to this, anger, clamor, and evil, speak, uh, evil speaking, listen to this, be put away from you. See, I thought it was going to be so deep. But God says, let all bitterness, anger, wrath, and all that stuff be put away. So here's how you heal from your bitterness. Number one, you got to abandon it. Bitterness just needs you to abandon it. I mean, I'm telling you right now, don't dress it up, don't clean it up, don't water it up, don't fertilize it. God says, away. Put it away. That's what God is saying. Your decision is so powerful to just put it away. That's it. I, I, it looks so simple, and yet it is so hard because I want to justify my pain. See, I want you to hurt like I hurt. I want to do you like you did me. And yet God is saying, if you want to go on, abandon it. 
de-ice the plane. <laughs> you don't need to fight uh, the snow, fight the flakes, and fight the weather. And oh, No, 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 no. Don't even change the season. Just de-ice the plane. All you need is to take off, and when you are up there, it ain't cold up there like it is down here. You need to take off from down here. When you get up there, you don't need no more de-icing. You are on your own. Deal with this first. Yeah, the, the next thing is this. Uh, we abandon it, and the next thing when it comes to healing, you got to absolve it. Absolve it. What does that mean? You, you got you to gotta forgive. You got to forgive. I'm telling you, forgiveness simply needs Jesus and you. You can forgive the whole world as long as Jesus and you are together. And somebody says, Pastor, but I, I, how can I tell how to forgive? I'm glad you asked. I'm finishing right here. If you want to know how to forgive, you need to go to the cross and learn how you're forgiven. Go to the cross and learn how you're forgiven. But sis, don't just go for you to learn how to be forgiven. Stay there so that you can learn how to forgive. Oh, God, hear it. You go to the cross to learn how you're forgiven. You stay at the cross so that you learn how to come down and forgive everybody because you got to deal with it. You don't need more money. You need to deal with your bitterness on your job. Someone less qualified than you is going to be blessed because God ain't for you alone. The God on the mountain is your God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll do them right. So you need to understand you don't have to be the most qualified person in the room. Even the least qualified person in the room. Can, can, I, can I talk to you then I'm done? Joe Biden lost three times. He ran for president three times and this time when he's supposed to be going to the nursing home, God sends him to the White House. See, you got to understand you ain't out, but you got to deal with this first. Bitterness will make you with bitterness, Gil, it'll change your wardrobe. When you are bitter, you want dark colors. Even your wardrobe, you need to go donate some things to Goodwill and Salvation Army. Bitterness will mess you up. Bitterness will make your card so dirty because it's a reflection of your heart. You didn't hear what I'm saying? It will make your house look like what's in the world is going. You have good furniture. You don't need new furniture. You don't need new bed. Your bedroom is good. The size is good. The bed is good. But when you are bitter, everything outside reflects on the inside. And God says, deal with it. Because it doesn't only mess you up. If it stays unchecked, it will mess everybody who is around you. So I just want to pray today and let somebody go because it was on my heart. I, I said the nation need to hear this. Bitterness, man, bitterness. Bitterness will jack you up. You, you, listen, you, 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 you listen, you can be happy with nothing when you are free. So I just want to pray for somebody who wants to say, Pastor, I'm the one. I didn't know I needed this. But I've got some things I need to confront. I've got some things I need to understand. I've got some things I need to go to. I've got some things that I need to let go of because I'm only killing me. Yes. You are a beautiful person. Bitterness will put on some stuff on your face. That's not there. God created a perfect you. I mean, you don't have to run like me. I don't have to run like you. Just run you. But when bitterness comes in, it exaggerates everything and minimizes everything in you. And we are praying. Father, we want to thank you so much for this moment today. And God, as this word went out, as this word will go out, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that, Master, you may set us free. Lead us to the cross so that, Lord, we may understand how you forgave us. Give us the discipline to stay long enough at the cross so that we may learn how to forgive others. Uproot this root of bitterness from our hearts. 
We want our families happy. We want to be happy on the job. We want our churches to flourish with happy people. People cannot be happier in the club than they are in your house because there's bitterness of power in the church. So God, we pray that you may pull it up so that we may be free. De-ice us, God, so that we can take off to the heights that you want us to go to. Forgive us of our sins. Heal that relationship. Heal that church. Heal that person. Heal that adult who is still hurting from childhood wounds. In the name of Jesus, sprinkle the blood. Amen. And amen.